Hello, I'm Mark Reed. And today let's talk tanks, as in what type of tank should you consider for your PCP air gun as far as capacity and the ability to fill it appropriate number of times before it needs to be refilled itself. Now, some may say the old adage, bigger is better, always holds true, but that just may not be the case for your individual needs. In fact, the answer to the question of what type of tank you need is it depends. It depends on your need and your individual situation, your individual gun or guns. So you may in fact just want to consider getting a backup tank like the type your air gun has. That would be a good option if you're just going out for a day or you're hunting in the woods and you want some mobility, you could consider getting a tank like this. Now, there are differences in backup tanks or the types of tanks on your guns. Some require threaded uh, screw on. This would be an example of like an Air Force type air gun tank that uses a spin lock so that uh, you don't have to really screw the tank on itself. In my opinion, I think this is a better option than continuously trying to thread a tank on on a regular basis. I would be cautious about that only because if you misthread it, you could tear it up and that's something you don't want to do. But having a backup tank is never a bad idea. It's just depending on how you want to use it. Another major consideration would be what type of pressures are you shooting in your air gun tank? So if you have a low pressure, and I consider low pressure uh, somewhere around 3000 PSI versus a 4500 type PSI option on your gun. If you're using low pressures, you could consider getting a, what we call a buddy tank, which is a smaller tank uh, designed to be also potentially carried in your backpack, although it's not extremely light. Um, a buddy tank like this is about 90 cubic inches or 12.9 cubic feet. Uh, it would certainly be appropriate to use for multiple fills on low pressure guns around 3000 PSI. And this is something that I use for quite a long time with the Air Force type system. And I think that's a great option, if, if, especially as a little bit lower cost option, if that's your setup. Now the next option I would consider would be what I'd call a mid-size type tank like this. And mid-size tanks basically run from 4.5 to 6.8 liters. That would also be equivalent to 44 to 66 cubic feet. And if you're looking at tanks known as SCBA tanks or self-contained breathing apparatus tanks or fireman's tanks, that would be equivalent to a 30 minute or 45 minute tank. This, this is a 45 minute tank and I found it to be extremely useful. Now, this is probably going to be the majority of people who have um, higher capacity air guns uh, around 4,500 PSI it tanks on their guns. And these tanks um, can be filled with non-commercial type compressors like a Yong Hing. Now you would not generally use an oilless compressor to fill a bigger tank like this. Uh, so oilless compressors are used only really for filling own gun tanks and you know the intrinsic tank within the gun. But this type of tank could be filled with a relatively cheap compressor like a Yang Hing or certainly a higher end compressor. Now a mid-size tank is going to be a very popular choice for most people because of its higher capacity. It also has portability although it's not going to be a backpack type tank. This would be something you could take to the range or certainly use at home as, a, as your storage unit for refilling your air gun tank. But SCBA tanks in particular tend to be a very popular option. SCBA tanks are generally going to be found uh, used. Aftermarket fireman type tanks can be found on eBay and are usually reasonably priced. Now, I'm going to talk about the issues of recertification in just a moment. But having this size type tank tends to be super popular and very, very usable for most people. Now the largest type tanks you're going to find are the 9 liter or 88 cubic foot tanks. Those are also known as 60 minute tanks if you're looking at SCBA type tanks. And these certainly give you the highest capacity. Now, 
You have to be careful if you have a very incapable compressor, and I would certainly consider every oilless type compressor to be totally inadequate to fill any tanks like this. But even a Young Hing, um, you have to be careful with that because although you can fill a larger tank with a Young Hing, you have to be very disciplined to do it on a very incremental basis so that you don't tear up your young hing. So that's a totally different topic. You can get the tank, just be real careful in your filling. If you have one of the larger, especially commercial type compressors, no problem with this tank. And it gives you by far the greatest capacity. It is also the most expensive tank that you can get, obviously. There can be a lot of confusion when you talk about the differences between a liter size tank and a cubic foot size tank. And so I hope this table is helpful. This also helps give you an idea when you're talking about SCBA tanks, when you may see them referred to as a number minute type tank, 30 minute, 45, 60 minute tanks. Now, something very important to understand with any type of carbon fiber tank that you may purchase is that it has a 15 year lifetime in most cases. And so whatever the cost is, divide by 15, that's ultimately gonna be your price per year, obviously. And so when you buy a tank, knowing ahead of time that it has a 15 year lifetime, it also has other requirements associated with it, particularly that every five years, it has to be recertified through what's called hydro testing. So you'd have to take your tank every five years to, or mail it off to a place that does hydro testing so it can be recertified for an additional five years until the 15 year lifetime has been reached. Every tank will have a label on it which shows it's born on date, the date it was created. And from that date, you have the 15 year lifetime or with aggressive recertification up to 30 years of life with an SCBA tank. Now, it's very important to understand that based on that date, it's your responsibility to have it hydro tested every five years. And because of the certification and the responsibility of doing this, every tank in the United States is certified under the DOT system, the Department of Transportation Certification. And so if you try to take another type of tank, particularly like a European tank, which is certified under the CE label, you will not have any dive shop that's legally able to fill that type of tank. Only the DOT certified tanks that are within uh, the tested DOT recommendations of every five year hydro testing can be filled at a dive shop. Now, obviously you can do what you feel is appropriate for yourself and fill in your own tanks, but I would strongly recommend every five years having your tank hydro tested. This is a very high pressure sport with risk associated with it. You should never take a risk with your own life in uh, not having your, your equipment tested on a regular basis. Now, one word about SCBA tanks in general. SCBA tanks are some of the most rigorously built tanks because people's lives are at stake, the firemen who use these on a daily basis. And so, if you read online, you'll see that these tanks are certainly regarded as having a longer lifetime, even up to 30 years, and can be recertified for a total lifetime of 30 years. You will see these listed as life extended SCBA tanks, and they've undergone very rigorous testing to ensure that that's the case. But SCBA tanks um, are extremely tough. And so uh, you can, of course, break any tank if you treat it roughly, but it's very difficult to do that with the SCBA for a reason. So if you see an extended life SCBA, it's usually had 15 years of, it, of use already and has been recertified for an additional 15 years. You may find these at a lower price. It may be a fairly good deal. An additional consideration if you buy an SCBA type tank 
is that you have to have the ability to transfer the air into the tank as well as out of the tank. And so you'll need an adapter to do that. Uh, I chose a Stickman adapter, it's highly regarded, but there are other adapters that you can use. But you have to screw this into um, the tank itself to be able to add the air and to transfer air out. If you buy a different type of tank, uh, you should have a stem at least accessible so that you can fill and get air out. I hope this has been helpful in deciding what type of tank to purchase. I wish you the best and thank you so much for watching.